As a portrait photographer, I'm sure you're aware of white balance and how important it is to take photos with the correct white balance settings. For example, if you're indoors, you want to set it to something like tungsten or incandescent, you know, so you don't get a yellowish hue. And if you're outside, you set it to daylight or natural or whatever preset you have in your camera. You can set it manually, of course. And so we want to do this, otherwise we'll have too bluish of a hue outdoors if we have that set for an indoor setting and vice versa, it'll have a yellowish hue. If we take photos indoors and it's really set for white balance for outdoors, if we don't properly white balance, we can always fix it after the fact. It's preferable to, to take photos with a correct white balance to begin with. However, here's a really cool technique to fix white balance in portrait photos. So open up smile.jpg in Photoshop from the support files. And you'll notice this has kind of a yellowish tint to it. And you might be thinking, well, why don't we just do an adjustment layer, like say color balance, right? And then instead of yellowish, let's just bring it over to blue a little bit to even it out. And that actually does look okay. And we could adjust the opacity of that if it's too strong, or we could adjust it over here and we could ask, mask out certain areas if it, we didn't want it applied to everywhere. But here's a better way. Let's delete that new adjustment layer. Let's create a new one, but we're not gonna go to curves yet. First, let's go to threshold. In the threshold effect, if you click and drag on the properties panel here, all the way to the left, almost all the way to the left, not quite there. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so we can see everything. So if we zoom out, you see it's quite until we see hardly any pixels here. I'm going to type in like not three, probably five. Okay. So at five, we've got a couple pixels down here. What we're going to do is click and hold onto the eyedropper tool on the tools panel. Then click on color sampler tool because that's just going to mark where we need a later sample. So I'm going to click that. And if we need to move it, you can just hover over it and move it like so. So it gives me kind of a marker of where that point should be. Then let's click and drag this all the way over to the right. Oh, there's one up here, I think. Let's see. Let's try. 250 okay so we could zoom in if we needed to but that's uh, gonna have to go up a little bit all right so why did we do that I'm gonna hit the icon this is the lightest point in the photo this is the darkest point so we don't need this adjustment layer anymore that we have up here so click and drag that and now let's add another adjustment layer and let's go to curves. All right, we still have our color sampler points. So what we need to do, we could experiment with this. Like if we hit auto and then we go to down here and go to auto options. And there's a couple presets here. You know, none of those are really working. This one's okay, but I don't want to do that. All right, I don't want to do auto. So I'm actually going to click and drag that. Again, I just wanted to show you that that's an option if, if you're in a hurry. But I'm going to go back to curves. This is a much better way. If you look on the properties panel of this curves adjustment layer, there's a set the white point and then set the black point. Well, we need to set the white point, obviously, right up here. The lightest point is. Then we need to set the dark point right down here. And we need to set a mid-tone, maybe kind of in the grayish area over here. All right. And the mid-tone we don't need to worry about as far as, I mean, you can experiment and see, but definitely don't want to hit it in the wrong spot. Somewhere where there's kind of a grayish hue. We don't really have to set the midpoint if you don't want to, but so there's before and there's after. So that actually looks a little bit better. I think it's a little bit strong though, and we could adjust some of the settings over here. 
right? You can, for example, you can click and drag on specific ones. Looks a little bit better. Or if the overall effect is a little bit strong, you can adjust the opacity of this adjustment layer. So let me show you the before. I'm going to zoom in here. Here's the before. Kind of have a yellowish hue, almost like the photo was taken with the wrong white balance settings. And then there's the after. Looks a lot better. All right. So that is the white balance correction using the threshold to set some color sampler points so that we know the lightest and the darkest areas to later use the curves adjustment layer to set the dark point and the light point with those eyedropper icons. And again, remember, we can double click on this adjustment layer and adjust it after the fact. It is a live effect, so it is editable. You can also edit the red, green, and blue individually and see what you can come up with as far as correcting the color in this. So that is the white balance adjustment in Photoshop.